Hey friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me in my craft room today. I'm super excited to be sharing you some of the brand new Tim Holtz Sizzix dies um, for Christmas 2023. Thank you to scrapbook.com for this little goodie bag. I also got one of their mesh zipper pouches, some mint tape, but let's talk about the amazing thinlets and colorized thinlets from Tim Holtz and Sizzix. So these are the different ones that I have as well as the 3D texture fades. I also have a 6x8 peppermint smooth cardstock and Christmas smooth cardstock packs and a new magic mat which I desperately needed my magic mat for my Sizzix Big Shot Switch is looking a little rough these days. Now, as much as I did love the wood grain embossing folder and vintage sled thinlet die set, this adorable Christmas tree set called Trim a Tree Colorize just was calling my name and needed to be made. So I'm gonna be using this die set and showing you how I have added some distress ink, some watercolor splatter, some distressing, so you can see how this card will turn out. I did use lots of green cardstock from the peppermint and Christmas paper pads. So I used the dark and mid-tone greens are from Christmas and the lighter green is from peppermint. And I'm using some distress ink and pine needles just to add a little bit of extra color and dimension and distressing to my die cut images and I'm just following the numbers on the back of the dies to layer them together so I have the mid-tone green was number one my darker tone was number two and right now I'm going on the lightest tone which was number three and what I liked about this die is that the there are some like areas where you can kind of curl up the tree, which gives it more of a, a 3D look, which I thought was really cool. So before I glued on each of these different layers, I tried to add a little bit of ink just to give it again, like I said, some dimension and texture. I would add some glue with a fine point tip and then glue it onto my stack of tree. <laughs> I'm moving back into the next color. There are six different layers to this tree, so I used every color twice. So I have that mid-tone again. Here's the darkest one. It's getting added. And then the lightest tone is that small little tree topper, which I will glue down next. I also just keep adding ink as I go. However, I think it needs it. I like having it more towards the edges of the different kind of branches that are coming out from the dye. Um, but, you know, obviously color as much as you want. It doesn't really even need any distressing if you don't want it to because the colorize just helps add all the color it really needs. But of course, we love Tim Holtz and we love his distress ink. So we're gonna be adding distress ink. I also kind of squeezed or smushed the pine needle distress ink onto my mat, sprayed it with water and splattered it all over my tree. For my tree stump, there are two pieces and I die cut them both out of the same brown from the Christmas paper pad. And I'm using ground espresso and one of my blending brushes um, my blending brushes are from scrapbook.com and I'm adding in that ground espresso to the edges of my top layer of my tree trunk and then um, completely covering where it has the openings coming through um, with that ground espresso on the back layer. And then again, adding some more splatter, just squish that ink onto my mat, added some water and just use one of my paintbrushes to splatter that on. I wanted to go for a fun kind of non-traditional colors for Christmas and I'm just really loving pink and teal right now. I'm not sure if you've seen any of my other Christmas videos recently, but I'm loving pink. So I die cut the star which has four pieces. I believe it's three dies and um, they cut out the different parts of the star. So I'm just adding some 
Kitsch Flamingo as the lighter of my two pinks and picked Raspberry as the darker. And I'm using a smaller brush from scrapbook.com to add these onto my die cut pieces. So I glued the middle layer to the back star, which was the full star. And then these two smaller pieces, you can see on the star, there's some kind of impressions where you add in the layering die cuts. I will add a little bit more Distress Ink to my star. I wanted more of that picked raspberry to really shine on that star, kind of darken it up just a little bit. And then I will end up grabbing one of my glitter brushes from scrapbook.com. I thought it would be really pretty with some shine, so I grabbed the pretty pink glitter brush marker and completely covered my star as well. Next, we're going to work on the ornaments. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here because they're so teeny tiny and I want to just show how I layered them together. So I die cut the base of the ornament out of some great cardstock. This is from the Christmas um, paper pad as well, the lighter of the two grays. And then I die cut my ornaments. Um, the pink was also from peppermint, but I have the two kind of teal colors from peppermint as well. And I started with adding some glue to the lighter solid ornament that's glued onto the silver well, silver inspired, but gray cardstock. And then the darker one has an opening on it so you can kind of see the glare of the ornament under kind of shining through that opening. And I just did that for all steps of my ornaments. I die cut them all out twice uh, using the same color combination. And now I've grabbed peacock feathers and a little tiny blender brush and just added a little bit of ink to my ornaments. I'm going to start gluing my Christmas tree together starting with my beautiful pink tree at the top of my or tree pink star at the top of my tree although now I wish I would have done a pink tree and now I'm gluing the trunk of my tree to the back um, so that way the branches are covering the trunk a little bit and then I just have a jewel picker here where I'm going to pick up each of these little ornaments and set them where I think they look nice and then I will pick up each ornament and then use some liquid adhesive to glue them down and this took a little time so I'm only going to show one or two here but just picked up my little ornament added the glue and set it right back down and did that for all of my ornaments so there were eight total that will finish off my tree assembly but we're going to add some shine um, so I'm grabbing my starry colors watercolor set and I'm using the white gold um, which is just kind of like a white sheen metallic watercolor just like I did with my ink smushing added some water got a little paintbrush and splattered it all over my tree and I'm going to go ahead and set that aside to dry while I figure out my background. So my tree is going to fit very nicely on a 5 by 7 card. So I have a sheet of the gray Tim Holtz Distress Wood Grain card stock. Uh, looking back, I probably should have used my new wood grain embossing folder, but in my head I was thinking, oh, I have this gray wood grain card stock. I should use it. <laughs> So I use my deckle trimmer from Tonic and Tim Holtz to trim it down so there would be a border around my card when I'm done. But I really wish I would have held off until after I finished my background. So if you want to replicate this card, glue the joys to your background before you trim it. Uh, you'll see why later. So I die cut the word joy and this is from another set that was gifted to me from... Uh, scrapbook.com for the new collection and this is the big tidings thinlets die set and I die cut just the word joy six times I did it two times out of the pink two, ta two times out of that light blue teal color and two times out of the darker color these are the same card stocks I used for my star and ornaments and I'm adding some ink just to kind of make an ombre look on all of these die cuts my pink has kitsch flamingo and picked raspberry again my lighter blue has peacock feathers I went over it twice so once a little soft and then add a little more ink to the bottom to darken it up and then I'm doing the same thing on the darker teal blue cardstock this time with uncharted mariner and what I want to do is kind of create a repeating word kind of 
background. You'll see if that didn't make sense. And I'm starting with my middle color and I'm going to glue Joy next to each other on the same kind of centered. I'm trying to make it go across my background uh, right in the middle. So I'm using my grid mat here to help me get it layered up. And I'm starting with Joy and it will go off the edge a little bit and that's okay. So this is why I said I wish I would have waited to cut my background until my words were glued down because trimming off these letters um, when you're an impatient crafter because the glue hasn't completely dried yet is not the most fun but it works out just fine. So I have my light blue centered and they're both fitting on the background and this time I'm going to center the word joy with the pink for the layer on the bottom and then I'm going to cut my other joy in half because I know that I only need half on both sides and it will go off the edge a bit so I'm not too worried about it not being a perfect center cut and I'm going to glue the J and the partial O on the right side and then I'll glue the other partial O and the Y on the left side and I did the exact same thing but with the darker joys on the top row. So I wanted my pink star at the top so I put the pink on the bottom for the sentiment so that way there was a little bit of contrast to where the pink is on the background. So now I didn't show you how long it took me to cut off all of those edges with my decal trimmer. Like I said I was impatient and um, some pieces took me a little more time than I would like. But if your words were completely dry and secured well, they should trim off no problem. But like I said before, glue the words down and then use your decal trimmer. I also die cut some of these cool little like asterisk star burst dies out of some of that same light gray cardstock like I did for the ornaments. And I did three of those and I'm just gluing them kind of around where my tree is going to go onto the background. Just gave it the same treatment I would if I was using pops of color, which I will in just a little bit. I wanted my tree to really stand up and off my background so I'm using some foam adhesive. This is a two inch strip that I just chopped up with scissors to get to fit behind my tree. I love the two inch foam from scrapbook.com. It is my favorite and I glued that right to the center of my card background. I have the Sizzix scoreboard and trimmer so I'm going to go ahead and cut my five by seven card base. So I took the 11 inch edge if that makes sense and I trimmed it down to 10 inches and then I turned it at the eight and a half and trimmed it down to seven. So now my card is seven by 10. And then I took the 10 inch side and I'm scoring it at five inches. So now I have a five by seven card base. I'm using my tool here to also help me just really reinforce that scoring I did. And then I will start working on getting my card background glued to my card base. I um, was thinking about adding another layer of color, but I thought just the white edge would look really nice because my background is more of a soft gray color. Um, I didn't really want more bold in the background. I really wanted those joys to be the bold part. So that will be the card. But of course, like I said, I have some pops of color I want to add. I'm adding silver to the center of all those gray star burst die cuts and then I put some of the teal twinkle and unicorn tears <laughs> just kind of sporadically around the background. I did more of the teal on the top and pink on the bottom just to go with how the die cuts are and here is a final look at this amazing joy tree Christmas card again using the brand new Sizzix products partnered with Tim Holtz. They are amazing and I can't wait to make more with the rest of the products that scrapbook.com gifted me. So make sure you check me out over on my scrapbook.com project gallery, which I'll have linked down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.